Welcome to Max Gamers. This will be the first in a series of videos from Digital Combat Simulator, also known as DCS, covering the campaign for the starter jet SU-25T Frogfoot. The name of this campaign is called the Georgian Oil War and was inspired by the real 2008 Georgian War. There are other videos on this topic already, but I don't feel many of these people adequately explain how to go about beating these missions. So our videos will be going in depth about everything needed to beat every mission from beginning to end. Enjoy. This campaign works slightly differently than campaigns from other games. The front line in the overall war will either advance or retreat depending on the success of your missions. Every mission has a designation, and sometimes missions can repeat themselves in terms of objective and location. Our first mission will be ATO A.03.4. This brings us to the briefing screen which tells us the details of our mission, the types of enemies we will be facing, and other things like weather and radio frequencies. We are more interested in the mission planner. Going into the mission planner will allow us to change our aircraft loadout and waypoints as well as program our AI wingman to take certain actions. Normally our loadout will consist of air-to-air -air missiles, anti-tank rockets, high drag bombs, TV guided rockets, and high explosive guided missiles. All of these weapons add a lot of weight to our plane and if you look on the right you will actually see we are over max takeoff weight. For this mission, I will only be taking the Vicar TV guided rockets, KH-25ML laser guided rockets, two pods of 32 unguided rockets, and two radar jamming pods. I also decided to ditch our Mercury LLTV pod since we will be flying during the daytime. Now you will see that we are below max weight and we should have less drag which will help us fly faster and be more maneuverable. I give my AI wingman the same loadout by selecting unit 2 of 2 in the top right corner. Now we will edit our waypoints for this mission. Normally the preset waypoints will take you into mountains over enemy SAM sites and stinger missiles if you set your autopilot to them. I will be reworking our flight plan to take us low over the water at a high speed to avoid line of sight from any missile launching enemies and to also get quickly behind enemy lines to take out our main objective. We can edit the altitude on the way to the waypoint as well as the speed by editing the values at the right of our screen. Typing an exaggerated number either low or high will automatically set it to the game's most allowable value. Just remember that your autopilot will take an altitude of zero literally so it's best to have a non-zero altitude if you plan to follow the route on autopilot over water. Also remember to make sure the altitudes you enter are either in sea level or above ground level. If you forget to check this, your route may keep you on the ground going over mountains and maybe even crash into the side one. Blue units between our front line and our recon objective are armed with missile launching enemies, so we will be attacking from the east. On approach to our target, I will set the speed to 330 knots, because that is what I found the AI to prefer when attacking ground targets. Our waypoint 5 will need to be placed slightly beyond our target to make sure our wingmen will see the enemy, and the turning angle should not be too tight, otherwise our wingmen will cut the corner and never get close enough to see the enemy. To program our wingman to attack the enemy group using advanced waypoint actions, there are a few ways to do this, but today I will select start and route task, search then engage group, and click the target group on the map, G, H, Q. We will also specify guided weapons to keep our wingman from flying too close to the enemies. We now have one more thing to do. We must set our AI options at the starting waypoint. Some options are preset. I will set reaction to defense on horizontal AAA fire evade to prevent them from flying too high and getting shot down by a missile. I will restrict weapons jettison to keep them from dropping their weapons and returning to base, but I will also allow them to return to base if they should use all their ammo. Now I'm going to add more options. Our rules of engagement, or ROE, will be to fire only at designated targets. Now my wingman will not attack any targets except those in the GHQ group. I prefer to set formation to trail only because it's simple. Our wingman will always have their electronic countermeasures, ECM, or jamming pods on, so it's a bit harder for those radar guided enemies to lock on from a distance. Those are all the options I will be setting for this mission.
On our enemy list, we can see that we are expected to face a variety of tanks, aircraft, and other vehicles. The only enemies we should take note of here are the A-10Cs, SA-18 Iglas, and the MI-24Vs. In this mission, the enemy A-10 Warthogs and the MI-24 Hind Helicopters are only serving in a ground attack role, and our red air defenses should shoot them down quickly anyways. SA-18s are heat-seeking stinger missiles. They are especially dangerous because they do not give a radar warning and will only fire at close range, so you will have only a second to react. They are also just soldiers holding rocket launchers, so they are nearly impossible to find and difficult to lock onto with the Frogfoot's lock-on camera. The best defense against these is to take them out at a distance or keep your distance. When reading these enemy lists and mission briefings, also keep in mind that the intel you receive could be off, and you may face enemies not included in the list. These usually include ZU-23 anti-aircraft guns, and SA-9 or SA-13 sights, which are both tank-mounted Stinger missiles. It may seem like I'm doing this backwards, but here is our mission briefing. Situation. Command requires updated reconnaissance of Bar Mish. Navigate to the annotated location and engage high-value targets in the vicinity of the recon objective. Objective, navigate to between waypoint 5 and waypoint 6 and engage targets of opportunity. These briefings are often pretty vague, but for this mission in particular, all it wants us to do is destroy all of the enemies in the designated GHQ group. If we can do that, the mission will be successful and we will earn a score of 100 on this mission. One last thing to mention, the reason I did this backwards is because I got shot down at least three times trying to do this mission successfully, even though it may be the first mission I could say with absolute certainty that this is a very difficult mission, relative to the other ones in this campaign. First I will flip my mirrors with the M key, and if we look to our right we can see our wingman. I'm going to call him Nikolai throughout this walkthrough series. On takeoff, be careful with Nikolai because he likes to take up the middle of the runway and will crash into you if you do not stay to the edge. Also remember to watch your rudder and aileron correction for strong winds, and don't take out your flaps all at once until you've gained a decent amount of airspeed. 300 and 350 kilometers per hour are usually where I like to pull my flaps. And also try not to bank too far to one side or else you may induce a stall on takeoff. I have found 270 kilometers per hour to be a good rotate speed for takeoff. Now is a good time to turn on the jamming pods, so click the E key to activate your jamming pods and keep them on throughout the rest of the flight. So here I will use the slash key to bring up the communications menu and tell my wingman to continue along the preset route. Now for some reason Nikolai will always be able to fly faster than us no matter how much weight he is carrying, so if you send your wingman off to the next checkpoint at max speed, he will definitely get left behind. But here I am doing this because I know he will be safe at low altitude, and right now I am only trying to get him behind enemy lines where he should be safe from enemy anti-aircraft fire. Nikolai is pre-programmed with crash avoidance, so even though the route is set to zero in altitude, he will be fine. We are instead going to use different autopilot modes including straight and level mode. I like to use this mode when looking at my map and using external views to keep from crashing into the ground. The shortcut for this, by default, is Alt 3. Something I've noticed, however, is that sometimes in straight level mode, uh, there will be a tendency to bring you down in altitude very slowly, so be careful about using this mode close to the ground.
This is where you can also find all of the different uh, autopilot modes, including barometric pressure hold and radar altitude mode. And it's very important that you know the distinct differences between these two modes because it can mean the difference between crashing to the ground or flying uh, at a nice altitude. Here you will notice a lot of shaking from the aircraft, and for most planes this can be very bad. Flying too fast can cause parts of the aircraft to become damaged, and even your wings might rip off if you're too aggressive with the controls while flying too fast. This is not the case with the Frogfoot, however. This plane is not very aerodynamic, but it is very strong. At least in the world of DCS, you can fly as fast as you want and not worry about the shaking. You can eliminate the shaking by dropping weapons or fuel tanks using Control w or by simply reducing your throttle to about 650 kilometers per hour. Here you will notice a periodic beeping noise. This sound is coming from our radar warning receiver and means that our aircraft is sensing radiation from a radar. This indication is likely coming from a radar-guided anti-aircraft gun mounted on a tank called a ZSU-23, otherwise known as a Shilka gun dish. The best thing to do here is keep a low altitude and just fly past. You'll be able to see our radar warning receiver in the bottom right corner of the cockpit with orange lights indicating which direction the signal is coming from. Here you can see that Nikolai is way ahead of us now. This is a good place to call him to hold position and not to attack the group until we run in and destroy the Stinger Missile Soldier on our objective. Nikolai is notoriously bad at evading Stinger Missiles and literally cannot engage Stinger Soldiers in this game. I spent many hours testing this theory and the best thing to do is to clear out all air defenses in an area before letting Nikolai clean up the main objective. Now that we are approaching our target area, let's switch over to air to ground mode by pressing 7. We will also need to turn on our TV and change the window size to 5 meters instead of 10 so we can lock onto the Stinger Soldier. This is done by holding right control and the right or left bracket to adjust the window size. I currently have a Logitech 3D Pro joystick, your basic starting joystick with nothing fancy and map most of the controls associated with the TV to the joystick buttons, such as slewing the camera from left to right up and down, the zoom function, and the lock-on button. With a click glance at our map, using the F10 key, we can see the location of the SA-18 Igla soldiers, and now we will be able to line up our stock. Unfortunately, there are trees surrounding the soldiers, so this will be a difficult run-in. Thank 
Закон НРК. От ориентира 2, 7, 8. Удаление 5. МЗА. От ориентира 2, 8, 0. Удаление 7. 50. Атакован НРК. От ориентира 2, 7, 8. Удаление 50. Атакован МЗА. От ориентира 2, 8, 0. Удаление 7. Command to 105. You are entering the area of interest. Recon for any high value targets and engage at will. Out. Zvenu. Luckily, we were able to find one of the two-man team and fire a KH-25 missile without getting shot by the MTLB armored personnel carriers. And we can send in Nikolai to finish the job. Usually in this campaign, every Stinger missile soldier is part of a two-man team. One person launches the missile while the other one loads and works a radio. To disable a Stinger missile site, all you need to do is hit one of the two people in the ground team. One important thing to remember about the Frogfoot is that it handles much better at higher speeds. Try doing your sharp turns at at least above 500 km per hour to get a good turning rate. On our next run, we are going to target the MTLBs I mentioned earlier, so we can help reduce the likelihood of Nikolai or myself getting shot down during our runs. Sadly, our missile connected with a tree instead of the MTLB, so I quickly switched to our rockets and fired a volley at the enemy. You may have also heard a new warning sound just now. That was a compressor stall warning. A compressor stall happens when not enough air is flowing into the engine fast enough, and if we don't increase our speed, we may end up losing too much engine power and falling to the ground. When this happens, increase throttle and angle the nose of the plane down a bit to regain control before attempting another harsh maneuver. Now that all of the MTLBs are destroyed, we can help Nikolai in destroying the remaining priority targets. On rocket runs with the Vicar TV guided rockets, I try to stick to a set procedure. Try to lock onto the target at maximum range and with about 600 km per hour airspeed. If there are trees or buildings blocking your direct line of sight from the target, either climb for a better top down view or turn to the side. Just make sure to keep your camera within limits and don't make too sudden movements or else you will lose your lock. The missile will always ride the laser pointing from the nose of your aircraft to the target on the ground. After the first rocket is fired, cut the throttle to idle and deploy the air brakes. The idea here is to linger on your path while you wait for the first missile to hit its target. You cannot turn away or move the camera until the missile hits the target. After the first missile impacts, quickly designate a new target while the cooldown timer for the targeting laser counts down, and then fire a second missile. After the second missile is fired, go to maximum throttle and bring the air brakes back in. At this point you should be very close to the target 
and the missile will only travel for a few seconds, allowing you to turn away before getting hit with anti-aircraft fire. I do not recommend this strategy for more dangerous targets, and in those cases, only fire one rocket per run to maintain a safe distance. Now there is some debate in the DCS community as to whether or not it is cheating to use labels on these missions, since it makes it very easy to find the enemy. But I think Cap from the Grim Reapers online community put it best when he said in real life, pilots will have intel in advance on where ground targets are. Also real world military pilots have commented that in DCS, the ability to see objects beyond one mile is very poor, and it's not reflective of real life anyways. You can change label visibility and settings, but I find the game more enjoyable if I can find my targets instead of making dozens of run-ins and getting shot down from not seeing anything. Because in the end, DCS is a game after all.
Mission success. Well done. We have gained some vital intel from your recce and you were able to take out their HQ with surgical precision. You may RTB. Out. There you have it. We were able to complete the first mission with a score of 100 while also keeping Nikolai alive and doing productive work, which is arguably the more difficult task. If you have any questions about something I did in this video, or have any tips or improvement, please leave a comment and I will be sure to reply. Thank you for watching, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.